in the last few videos i've been talking about this emergency fund what it is how to use it and how to build it but what if if something happens to you what happens not just to this emergency fund but your entire network let's talk about that hi everyone <clears throat> welcome to our channel in this video i'm going to give you a concept of ice what it is why it is important and how to go about building this ice plan before i do that a quick introduction about myself my name is yogi and my wife seema and i we both achieved financial independence retired early and to celebrate this retirement or early retirement we did this one year world trip and right now this is the last destination of this world trip here lovely singapore we have not only ended our world trip here but we were actually living here for 6 years so it holds a special place in our heart anyways back to the topic what is ice ice is what i say in case of emergency so this is an ice plan so what happens if something happens to you how will your parents your family uh, deal with that now the challenge is that in our society we don't discuss such tragic situations that if something unexpected tragic like you end up dying because of an unexpected situation that happens we don't discuss that and the tragedy is that when it comes to our corporate life we are almost every month doing these uh, emergency drills these fire drills that we are evacuating all these towers we are going down because there is a fire drill but sadly we don't do these emergency drills in our um, life forget about doing these or planning for these drills we don't even discuss it we don't want to talk about this d word death what happens in case we die unexpectedly and in the last few years especially during the covid times i've had quite a few people in our family and friends who unfortunately passed away unexpectedly and their families struggled not just emotionally but financially and trying to get everything together i'm sure that you may have also had that unfortunate situation that someone within your family or friends had such a tragic loss uh, during covid so for the people who had this tragic loss i saw them struggle uh, all of us friends and families we rallied together to help them support but then you realize by not just doing a small little thing of adding a nominee to the papers how much bureaucracy they had to go through to get those assets transferred and in quite a few cases forget about transferring they didn't even know that something like in life insurance or an asset existed within their family or for with their spouse do you know that more than 50 to 70000 crores of rupees are lying in the banking the mutual fund and the systems unclaimed because there was not a proper nominee added to the form or the family isn't aware that they had those assets so imagine the tragedy that there is 50 to 70000 crores of rupees unclaimed that's what you don't want to do that you leave your family in a stage that they either don't know that there is the, your assets or they have a big struggle in addition to losing their most loved ones that they are also struggling to find what their assets were so that's why it's absolutely important to build that standard operating procedure or a plan of what happens in case of emergency as i said simple thing of adding a nominee to a bank account or your dmat account or your investment accounts itself is a good start in addition to informing quite a few people when i speak to them they have this wrong belief they say hey i've just started my career i don't need uh, such a plan um i will probably have a plan and they joke that when i have maybe retired or have money like you but that's not the case it doesn't matter if you're at your start of your career middle of your career or at the end of the career and interestingly 
in my view, I have seen people struggle more or the families struggle more when you're at the start of the career because that's when the insurance money and all those assets can make a much bigger impact on their lives than, for example, when we are at our tail end of our career, we finish our career. So the sooner that you do it, the better it is. And it is a very critical part because you worked hard and you're working hard for every bit of that money. And you don't want that that money is lost into the system somewhere. Now, how do you go about it? Well, to deal with this big D word death, you go through these three D steps. That is, you document, decide, and you distribute. So the first step is documenting. So like we mentioned in many of our videos, having that personal financial plan is a very vital and critical part of that journey to financial independence. And for Seema and I, we review this on a quarterly basis. We review it on a yearly basis that we see how our network, our assets, etc., are growing year on year. But in part of our personal financial plan also exists this ICE plan in case of emergency plan. So what you need to do is that in your net worth tracker or in your financial tracker where you have listed all your assets, you need to add a few columns where you need to not only put the value of that asset, but also where that asset is and what is the way to access this asset. So for example, if one of your assets is gold, where is that gold? Is it lying in the locker? Is it lying at home in form of jewelry? Is it with your parents at your parents' place? Similarly, when you talk about fixed deposits, which bank? What is the bank uh, details? What is your customer ID? In your DMAT account, in your you know investment accounts, especially in your corporate accounts, you may be getting some RSUs or you may be buying shares of your company that you're working for, and that shares maybe in some international UBS or Fidelity or some other account somewhere in some other part of the world. And your family may not even be aware of the details on how to access that account while they may know that, hey, you do have some investments through company. So documenting all those assets in your net worth sheet becomes very important, not just in terms of the value, but the location, the details of those assets, including probably with if, you, if your uh, net worth sheet is, you know, safe on, uh, as a password protected encrypted Excel sheet, make sure that you even put your user ID, passwords, etc. So that for your loved ones, it becomes easier to access those details. And in that, in case of emergency plan, you're not just going to be documenting your investments, but you will also be documenting your identity details. So where's your copy of your passport where is what's the details of your insurance so in our case for seema and i um, seema's mother recently she had a hip fracture so we had to rush her to the hospital but we had to scramble and see where is her physical card for her insurance health insurance what is the health insurance id because that's what the hospital needed now, on hindsight, if we had that as also part of our in-case-of-emergency plan, it would have been very easy, though we were able to find it, but it takes time in the last minute. And when you are in a stressful emergency situation, the last thing you want is that you have a distraction of collecting that information that you could probably have documented earlier. So your net worth is an important aspect to that. Your identity details are important, your passport copy, your PAN copy, your Aadhaar copy of the details of those documents, not just your digital copy, but maybe even a physical copy of those documents. The third part of that is your, even the expense details, because what you don't want is that if something happens to you, your family may get that insurance money, they have their net worth details, but they probably stumble and learn that how much and how you were dealing with the expenses and that same happens for your parents if something happens to you as a couple then at least your parents know that what is the details and how um, much you need to be spending for that if possible you should also include the practical details like access to your phone 
Why? Because interestingly, most of the transactions, financial transactions that we do today require to enter an OTP and that OTP will go to your phone and if a phone is locked, then it, imagine the difficulty that your family may have to even access the banks and the digital uh, details. And yes, they may get access to your SIM card, but they will have to again go through with the telco, all those checks and balances and processes to get that access done. So just those putting it simply somewhere, documenting everything together can make the life so much easier. Because then your family not only knows what is your total net worth, what are your assets, but they also know where those assets are and how do you get access to that. And when you are documenting, also document the instructions because not everything is a digital asset. You may have a bank user ID password. You may have even put the password to your uh, phone, the details on um, in that so-called in, in case of emergency plan. But what about your physical documents of your property deeds, uh, your car papers, um, you know, registration booklets, everything, all those physical documents. They may be lying in a locker or they may be, and by the way, the locker key. Where is that locker key? Or they may be lying at your parents' place. They may be lying at your in-laws' place. So imagine the instructions that you should put there so that you're not, your family doesn't need to turn all those drawers and mattresses upside down to find all the details that you have to do. So that's the document part. The second part is decide. Let's say you've documented everything. So you have everything in place, but then you have to decide your standard operating procedure. Or I would not say standard. I would hopefully say this is a non-standard operating procedure that your family never needs it or only need it once in their lifetime. So what operating procedure do you want in terms of the decision process? And it could be in form of a will that what happens to asset X do you want everything to pass on to your spouse? Do you want it to be distributed? What happens if you and your spouse, both of you get or have an accident and both of you at the same time tragically pass away? What happens then? How does everything go to your children? But what if, if your children are minors? We've had quite a few friends during the COVID times because everybody came through these realizations and had these uh, problems in their family and friends, they reached out to us and they said that, look, uh, would you mind that if something happens to both of us, then that you become the caretakers to our children. So they will be living with their grandparents, but they are putting that operating procedure in place that if something happens to them, if something happens to their parents, um, them being minors, that how do they are taken care of? Now, all these things become even, this decision process becomes even more important, especially when you are an NRI, you are living in another country, you've got assets in different country, or something happens to you in the country that you're living and working in. Because then it's not just the laws of India or the laws of your home country, but the laws of the country that you're deployed, working in, and where your assets are. Because sometimes the will of or registered in one country may not be applicable in another country. So all those things become even more important uh, when you are in these international situations like Seema and I have been during our country, uh, during our careers. And this was the case for the, the friends of ours who had reached out to us saying that, look, this is what we want to be at least uh, legally being put in the documents for uh, their children because I can't just land up in that country and say, hey, this is what my friend said that, you know, we should be taking care of their children. We'll have to show all the proofs and documentations, etc. So that decision process becomes super important. And that is not just a decision process for you, but also in case something happens to you as a couple, in case something happens to you as a family, in case something happens to your parents, then what is their decision process towards you? So that is the decide step. So the third step is distribute. In this distribute step, this is where you make the people aware that this is what your decision is and this is where they 
should be aware of your overall assets or your decision process. Now, this is an important step because you do not want that someone doesn't even know that this is your decision process. And this could be an explicit uh, distribution that you can make them explicitly proactively aware before something happens to you and right now or it could be implicit implicit in the sense that you talk to a, a lawyer and you put it part of your will and you only make let them be aware at a stage when something has happened to you now in case of our friends case they proactively made us aware because they wanted to make sure that we are okay with this that if something happens to their them that we are going to be part of their children's future. Because imagine the surprise we get if something happens to them and suddenly some lawyer says that, hey, uh, you have to take care of those children. So making someone aware, that's again going to be based on your decision that do you want to explicitly make someone aware or implicitly make someone aware. But whatever it is, you should not ignore the step one and step two just because you're scared that you do not want someone to know all those details. That's your judgment call that you have to see that um, is it a good time to tell them or is it a bad time to tell them? Is it proactively you need to make them aware or they should be reactively be aware? But do not ignore of not doing the step one and step two. That is something that you make sure that you do. You need to check that what part of distribution has to be going through a legal process and what part of the distribution is more as a family and friends that you can pass on that information. And what I mean by that is because there are certain things that you can only distribute legally and especially when it is not next to kin. You need to make sure that there is a legal process behind it. So, for example, many people confuse the word nominee and beneficiary. So, whenever we are filling up, a, you know, signing up a bank uh, uh, account form or we are getting a new mutual fund and we add a nominee, and we implicitly assume that, hey, by adding this nominee, I've already done my task that if something happens to me, then this automatically will be transferred to the nominee. That is not correct. Nominee is just a custodian that what the bank or that mutual funds or whatever that uh, uh, financial asset is, that they will, with less paperwork, transfer that asset to that custodian in on a temporary basis. Beneficiary, on the other hand, is the rightful owner of that custodian. In quite a few cases, nominee can also be the beneficiary or can automatically be the beneficiary. But it doesn't have to be that the beneficiary is the nominee or has to be the nominee. Or the nominee is an automatically the beneficiary of that asset. So that's why, as I mentioned, that when you're distributing, you need to also check in this ICE plan how much of that is what you have to legally check and how much of that is what you can verbally inform the other person. So, for example, you may say, hey, if something happens to me, this watch of mine, you know, please keep it. Uh, this is what I want you to keep. Ideally, even there, you would want that it's written somewhere before there is a uh, dispute. And the last point on the distribution side, it is not just that you need to make someone aware of your assets. You need to also make them aware of your liabilities. Because I've had in certain of those personal situations where someone suffered a tragic loss and then the wife was also inundated by quite a few people saying, hey, this person had taken one lakh rupees from me, so can you please return whenever you would like in the next few weeks and months. And there was no paperwork. So she had to trust that person because that person was within the family. There was no paperwork that her husband had taken that money. So you need to make sure that your spouse, whoever you're distributing that information or also distributing your liabilities so that they know that they are not being taken for a ride later. And at the same time, they know that who they should proactively deal with whatever the liabilities are. So, the simple process of documenting, deciding, distributing is going to help you build that ICE plan. And this ICE plan could be an integrated part of your net worth plan. 
and you can just add those columns as I mentioned at least on there and maybe like what we have in our integrated net worth plan it's not just the net worth we have also got our expenses we've also got our identity documents all of that becomes easier and it's a password encrypted file that we've stored in a place that is only accessible to someone who we want and we've distributed to so make sure that you have this in place so that you don't have a situation that your family um, struggles um, if something happens to you so i hope that this video was useful it helps you to create the sense of urgency to put this ice plan in place and if you did like the video please do like and subscribe and if you have any thoughts suggestions comments about this ice plan please do put it in the comments would love to hear your thoughts till the next video till the next location and till the next topic goodbye from me bye bye